Good morning and welcome to St. Stephen's. Whether you are here with us in person or you're joining us on our live stream, we're glad that you have chosen to worship with us today. Our hymn on this third Sunday of Easter is 215 in the Blue Common Praise Book, Come Ye Faithful, Raise the Strain. Christ is risen. May, may his grace and peace be with you.
disabled and divine. Give us faith to perceive you pierced and embodied, standing here among us, feeding us forgiveness, beautifully broken through Christ, the suffering servant. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of our lessons. A reading from Acts. <clears throat> when Peter saw it, he addressed the people. <clears throat> Fellow Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus <clears throat> has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, brothers and sisters, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard-pressed. 
have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Lord. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O oh Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. The second reading is from the first letter of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, that when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or know him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thank you. 
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that I, it is I myself? Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and is to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Oh, that we might see better times. That certainly could be our, is our cry today as we face many unsettling things going on in our world. It was this cry of the psalmist, or at least was written by in our psalm today, as those of people at that time looking for better times. I kind of think about those disciples that we heard about today on Easter night. Now, we just read, I just read from Luke, the same a similar story to what we read last week from John. I think that they're telling the same story because they both happen at the same time on Easter evening, and they include Jesus appearing before the disciples and saying, peace be with you. Just to give a little background of what had happened about where our gospel picks up is this. Is that we know that on early before on sunrise on, on Easter Sunday morning, Jesus is raised. We, we get a recording that raised from the dead. The women go to the tomb to anoint his body, and they find it empty. They go back to the disciples and tell them, and the disciples believe they were just speaking idle tales. Then just after that, we have the story of the disciples unnamed walking to a town called Emmaus. And along the way, a stranger comes up with them and asks them about, what are they talking about? And then they go, well, haven't you heard of all the things that have gone on in Jerusalem? And then uh, as they explain this, then the stranger starts talking to them about the prophets and, and the Psalms and, and the law of Moses. And then they eventually get to the town that they were going to, and the stranger seems to be wanting to walk on, and they invite the stranger to dinner with them. And as they sit down at table, the stranger picks up bread, breaks it, and suddenly they see that it was Jesus, and then Jesus disappears. And then those disciples are so excited that they run back the seven miles to Jerusalem to tell the disciples. And they have just reported to the disciples what they had seen, and they've had this little dialogue when all of a sudden Jesus appears to all of them and says, peace be with you, just like he did last week as accounted by John. Now this time, peace wasn't enough for them to actually believe because we're told in Luke that while they had great joy, 
disbelief persisted among them. And I think that's really interesting, you know, that despite the fact that here they were, they were seeing Jesus, they had heard reports of his resurrection, they had just heard these other disciples say it, and yet, and they were joyful, yet they could not believe. So unlike last week, which we might call Doubting Thomas Sunday, this could be called Doubting All Disciples. All the disciples were doubting, you might say. And what would that be? I mean, here, after all, maybe it was this fact, I think, about those disciples, that they had been defeated by the sin of the world, that the trauma of Roman oppression and the violence that they experienced all the time, and it certainly had most clearly saw at their own, their Lord and Master Jesus himself being crucified, that they just couldn't understand it. They could not believe. In other words, their minds had been closed by the violence of the Roman Empire because the Roman Empire always won. Never did the Roman Empire lose in their minds. And so, Whoever this is in front of them is perhaps is just a ghost and nothing more. But look at Jesus' response to this, to this disbelief. It's not anger. It's not inflicting shame. It's the fact, in a way, he is very patient and kind and loving and trying to get them to understand. And to a point, it's almost humorous. I mean, he's almost saying, like, look. Here's my arms and my feet and my hands. You know, touch me. You know, can I say, look, and I, like, don't just doubt. Just like Thomas, remember, who said, if I only if I touch, you know, uh, put my hands in this holes on his hands and feet, will I believe? And so that doesn't quite get them. So the, 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 Luke doesn't tell us that anyone actually got up and tried to touch Jesus. So then Jesus goes, I, I know what I'll do it. Food. Because why not, right? We love food. They love food. And Jesus certainly loved food. And I can't imagine how hungry he must have been after three days and all that he went through. Now, like I said, those disciples, when they went to on a, at that table in Emmaus, they knew Jesus when he broke bread at the table. And in Luke particularly, Jesus loves to eat. Jesus is always sitting at table or having a meal with people. And, and that was actually one of the things of problem, is that he broke all the rules of table fellowship. He let sinners eat with him, even tax collectors. And then worse yet, he let women eat with him and even snacks to him. Oh my gosh. And we know from the great scandal that occurred, and Luke tells us about when a sex worker comes into the meal and washes Jesus' feet with her tears and dries her, her, his feet with her hair. Oh my gosh. So that Jesus would decide that the one way to convince the disciples that he really had been resurrected was to have a meal with them. And that's what he does. You might say that here, Jesus is living out as a resurrected Jesus, the open table fellowship that was characteristic of his ministry. A table where no one is excluded, not even those who don't believe. So, what also happened? Well, when they're sitting there eating and having their meal, he then opens their minds. I love that image, that concept, opens their minds. In other words, he expanded their imaginations, certainly their interpretive imaginations when it came to scripture, that he went well beyond what they probably thought they knew and just letting them see that scripture is so much more richer and deeper and incredible than they had ever imagined. And he connected all of it up to them and to what and who he was. So, we got last week and this week, where we have John and Luke telling a similar story about those close followers of Jesus. In John, we learned this, that fear was not, in, that because of fear, remember, the disciples had gone behind locked, closed doors. 
And instead, Jesus broke those down. His, and he then opened their hearts. In other words, he expanded their hearts to be able and capable of empathy and compassion and kindness to all. And now we get in Luke, where Luke, we are told, comes into their midst and in the midst of their disbelief, opens their minds, where in a place at a time where women could actually tell the truth and should be believed. He opened their mind to creativity and ultimately to transformation because we can only be transformed when our minds are open. And so here we have in two weeks, open hearts and open minds and open doors. And then when, when we believe the resurrection, I mean really believe it, we can't lock doors in fear and walling off our neighbors I'm back up. What good would it do for us to believe the resurrection if we hide behind the locked doors of fear and wall off our neighbors? Because if we keep our, if we have closed hearts and minds, what does the resurrection really mean? Not much. But when we allow the resurrection joy, when we allow the re we experience the resurrected Jesus and our hearts are open to joy. And then we also can experience Jesus at the open table where we can eat with those who perhaps we consider dead or the world considers dead. You know, the sinners, the tax collectors, and all those on the margins of society. And then ultimately, the resurrection opens our minds. Because you see, a closed mind is a mind that holds to rigid belief. That says, there's this one way, and I have the one way to believe. And in a sense, a closed mind turns resurrection into an empty, closed tomb. But when we put all this together, open hearts and open minds and an open table and an open doors, we really then can understand and live the resurrection. To quote a theologian who said this, resurrection is openness, the wild, unpredictable, confusing, and puzzling, unbelievable tell of the women. The tomb is empty. Jesus lives. The veil of the temple is rent. Every wall is torn down, every boundary dissolved, every lock broken, every door thrown off its hinges, every fear dissolved in love. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Our service continues on page three of your bulletin with the affirmation of faith. Please stand. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterward, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received, and this we believe. Amen. Our prayers of the people, if you may take any position that is comfortable, whether that it is standing, kneeling, or seated. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us. God of glory, that our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection. Let us pray to God. Yes, that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel. Let us pray to God. Yes, God. 
that he may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Let us pray to God. That he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. Let us pray to God. That by his power, wars and famines may cease through all the earth. Let us pray to God. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, the dying, and that they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to God. That he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. Let us pray to God. Please stand. Alleluia, Christ has been raised from the dead. The peace of Christ be always with you. Let us greet one another in the name of our risen Lord. Our offertory hymn is number 216, found in the Blue Book of Common Praise, the Choirs of New Jerusalem. service continues at the top of page five of your bulletin. May God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God, our creator. 
It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image, male and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened the path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants Abraham and Sarah, gave the promise to a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaim good, the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. 
through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say... Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us.
Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, so that we may show your glory to all the world, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Our announcements, uh, the, if you look on page 10, there is today the final Way of Love program at 11.30 in the boardroom. There are lunch provided. Tomorrow at 11 a.m., we will have here in our sanctuary the celebration of the life uh, for John, John Sorrell. Tuesdays are a Bible study. A Zoom link will be sent out uh, to you tomorrow. And of course, our rector's coffee hour and discussion. At the end of the month will be our St. Stephen's Community Singers uh, concert, Music of the British Isle at two o'clock. And here, uh, entry by donation. We hope that you will certainly come to that and make sure you're early. And then on May 11th is the Spring Garden Bee. That's uh, 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 we organized by Georgie Reddington. And then on Sunday, the 19th of May, is Pentecost Sunday, and everyone wear red, because it's Pentecost. We're celebrating the birthday of the church. Our choir's already ready for it. <laughs> uh, so wear red on that Sunday. At this time, I'd like to invite up David Pettip here for a special announcement. Thank you, Ted. Tomorrow, we will be celebrating first birthday of Frank Patterson, member of the Legion of Honor. But I'd also like on behalf of St. Stephen to welcome his son Byron and wife Robin to celebrate. Also Kara Merlin. Merlin and Frank get on so well. That's why Frank keeps going. And also Merlin's husband Salvador. So on behalf of St. Stephen, welcome all. We will be celebrating Frank Patterson this day. stand for our blessing. God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith and the blessing of God, holy eternal majesty, holy incarnate word, and holy abiding spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our hymn is 220, Christ is risen, Christ is risen.